China has made little secret of its long-term goal to replace the United States as the major power in Asia and assume what it considers its rightful position at the center of the fastest growing, most dynamic region of the world. But North Korea, which defied Beijing by testing a sixth nuclear bomb, has emerged as an unexpected and persistent obstacle. In this video, Defense Updates looks at how North Korea has turned the tables on China and has become a major hurdle in its path. Number 5 Mao, founding father of the People's Republic of China, was often quoted in the West as saying that North Korea and China are as close as lips and teeth, but his actual words, in ancient Chinese idiom, are better translated, if the lips are gone, the teeth will be cold. He was warning that China would be in danger without North Korea. In 1950, Mao sent more than one million Chinese soldiers, including his own son, into the Korean War to help the North fight the United States. By the time the truce was signed three years later, more than 400,000 Chinese troops had been killed and wounded, a sacrifice in blood that one might have expected to forge a lasting loyalty between the two countries. Number four. China has supported and reinforced North Korean military mainly because of two factors. One, shield to Japan. North Korea has been publicly against Japan. China and Japan have been rivals having territorial disputes. China sees North as a strategic leverage against Japan. Two, shield to the U.S. Almost all analysts will agree that should the war start in the Korean Peninsula, South Korea, with the support of the U.S., is bound to win. If this were the case, the U.S. military will have access to the entire peninsula and can drive its troops all the way to the Chinese borders. Number three. China has more nuclear-armed neighbors than any country in the world – Russia, India, Pakistan, and now North Korea. But that situation is partly one of its own making. The origins of North Korea's nuclear program can be traced to a deal in 1976 between an ailing Mao and Zulfikar Elbuto, then the Prime Minister of Pakistan. The particulars were ironed out by Pakistan visitors to Mao's funeral, according to an account by A.Q. Khan, the nuclear physicist who founded the uranium enrichment program of Pakistan's bomb project. In 1982, China shipped weapons-grade uranium to Pakistan, and in 1990, it opened its Lopnur test site to Pakistan and secretly let the country test its first nuclear bomb there. Pakistan was in turn sharing nuclear enrichment technology with North Korea, including centrifuges, parts, designs, and fuel essential for its nuclear bombs, in exchange for Korean missile technology and design help. Pakistan later accused Mr. Khan of acting on his own, but he maintains that he had the government's blessing. By 2002, the trade was so brazen that Pakistan sent an American-made C-130 cargo plane to North Korea to collect a shipment of ballistic missile parts, a flight that was detected by United States satellites. Some analysts argue that Beijing was complicit in the deal, either encouraging Pakistan to share nuclear technology with North Korea or looking the other way as it happened. China allowed the transfers to occur through Pakistan to maintain plausible deniability. It can be safely said that without Chinese help, Pakistan's as well as North Korea's nuclear program won't be where it is today. Number two. The United States, despite signs of retreat in Asia under the Trump administration, remains the dominant military power. China's path to dominance requires an American withdrawal and a message to American allies that they cannot count on the United States for protection. But North Korea threatens to draw the United States more deeply into the region and complicate China's effort to diminish its influence. At the same time, the strategic location of the North and its advancing nuclear capabilities makes it dangerous for China to restrain it. A hostile North will be a strategic catastrophe for China. Even if the United States steps back from the region, 
North Korea's defiant stance and nuclear capability means China will never be able to dominate the region as much as its leaders today probably hope. Number 1 There's growing resentment against North Korea's leader, Kim, inside China, both in the general public and the policy establishment. China keeps North Korea running with oil shipments and accounts for almost all its foreign trade. But to many Chinese, Kim seems ungrateful. A three-day academic seminar in Shanghai last month brought together some critics who question North Korea's value to Beijing. It was warned that the North Korea's nuclear program could prompt South Korea and Japan to develop nuclear weapons of their own. Both these nations are rivals to China and if these nations go nuclear, it will be a major setback to China's ambitions in the region as China will lose its strategic edge. The Trump administration has bet on China to stop North Korea's nuclear program, shunning talks with Mr. Kim and gambling that Beijing can be persuaded to use its economic leverage over the North to rein it in. But this has been a total failure, underlining the limited ability of China to influence North Korea. Recent Doklam standoff has also not gone well, with India making China pull back its troops. Further, India and Japan, China's traditional rivals in the region, have made clear that they intend to resist Chinese influence in the region with mutual strategic cooperation. South China Sea dispute is another important flashpoint that's already stretching Beijing military and diplomatically. So basically, China's deeds is coming back to haunt it and the rise of North Korea's nuclear capabilities has thoroughly diluted its strategic leverages in the region at a time when it's being pushed back on multiple fronts. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.